Okay, I'm back. I don't know what happened, but my Facebook video just stopped. So, anyways, if you're back, my name is Tamara Bennett with Southern Adornments Decor, and I'm fixing to attempt a paint pour technique on this little leaf. Um, I've got some Deco Art Pouring Medium. I don't know what happened just a minute ago, guys, but if you're just now joining me, my video cut off, and I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but it froze up on my end, and my face was stuck like this. <laughs> and so I had to like reboot and everything and so hopefully we've got it fixed now I was checking on my computer to see if I was still live and it made it appear like I was but it wasn't letting me um, it wasn't letting me watch it it was just this like the spinning wheel of death so let's try this again and hope that Facebook doesn't have a hiccup and shut down on me thank you Kathy I got this shirt in the mail the other day somebody saw it I think on Facebook for sale and they tagged me and they said that you need this because it looks like a watercolor rooster. Isn't he pretty? So, yeah, I was like, yeah, I need that. So, I bought it. <laughs> Hi, Jalissa. Okay, so, anyways, I'm probably going to go back and delete the original video. So, let's start all over. If you want to share this video with somebody who might want to try paint pouring, this is my first time. I did do a practice um, with this little cup and I had some orange and yellow and red in there and then I poured it on a paint plate and I realized that I did two things wrong. First, I used too much orange and not enough of the other colors. And then second, the other thing I did wrong was is I only mixed the pouring medium with the orange. So, I learned something. What you need to do is you need to get little cups of each color and let's see, okay, so I've got red. What's some other fall colors? Orange, we need, I mean, sorry, yellow. And we need some orange. It wasn't this orange that I was going to use, was it? Oh, well, this will work. Let me put some orange in here. I'm not going to do a whole lot because this is a tiny little leaf. If this were a great big leaf, we would need a lot more. So, you see how much I got in there? It's not even really maybe a tablespoon. Okay, somebody says green. I'm kind of thinking instead of green, I might like throw a wild card color in there like turquoise because it looks so good with orange and red. So let's try some turquoise and maybe just a dab of brown. Oops, hang on. I just had a clump of dried paint fall in there. Don't want that. Okay, so I put each of these in a little bit of cups and I found these little cups at Walmart. They're actually snack cups that come with little lids. I bought them for Charlie to take snacks to uh, preschool with her. Oh, somebody said copper. I'm actually gonna use some like gold. I don't think I have any copper. No, I don't have copper. I have gold, but um, I don't know if I'm gonna pour it in or if I might drizzle it on at the end. I don't know, we're experimenting, so. Okay, and I wanted a little bit of brown. Not a lot, but a little. What type of wood do I suggest using? Um, uh, I, if I'm cutting with a jigsaw, I always used to purchase um, Revolution plywood. It's quarter inch thick, and you can get it at like Lowe's and Home Depot and places. But now, since all of my stuff is laser cut, we use MDF. So if you can find MDF, it's hard to find in quarter inch thick. Um, it works great, but when you cut it, you need to wear a mask, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'm doing a paint pour technique on this little bitty door hanger attachment leaf. It's going to be glued when it's completely dry and done to an acorn door hanger that I'm painting. So, okay, we've got red. We've got a little bit, not very much, brown. Peacock teal. Whoops. Orange. Now look, this is yellow, but it already has that pouring medium mixed in with it, so there's more. Okay, so I didn't really have popsicle sticks. I was not prepared to do this. This is just one of those things that I decided it and five minutes later I'm doing it. So I'm just going to wipe my stick off the best I can here and pour just a tiny bit of this pouring medium in each of these little cups. You want to do about a one to one ratio depending on the type of paint you're using. Um, this is just an acrylic craft paint so I don't know why I'm putting the lid on that. Let me go ahead and pour about the same amount and I'm just guesstimating here about how much to put. I hope this turns out really cool. If so, y'all might see me doing more paint pouring videos because I think it kind of becomes addictive once you've been doing it for a while. Thank you guys for sharing. This video is already up to over 200 people watching. Okay, so you've got your pouring medium and your orange paint. Just stir, stir, stir. It kind of looks like glue and it thins out your paint 
And so that makes it to where your paint will flow and kind of keep moving across the project and not like get stuck and stay there. And it kind of makes it to where it mixes with the other paint colors really well. And it helps create those little, I'm wiping my little popsicle stick thingy off. Um, and it keep, creates uh, what's called cells. Um, cells are like, you've seen people on Facebook do those little paint pouring videos, haven't you? Where um, it looks like bubbles of other paint colors coming up through the paint. So that's what the cells are. So that's what this is supposed to do. I think you can still do paint pouring without the paint pouring medium. You just might not get that really cool effect that you're looking for. You'll just kind of get a marbled look. Does that make sense? Hi, Lynn. Hi, Jackie. I'm so glad you guys found me and are watching me today. But yeah, if you guys want to share this video, we might give something away. I'll look around my craft room and find something that we can give away. I didn't really plan anything ahead of time, but I've got all kinds of junk around here I can send you that hasn't even been opened yet. Because, uh, yeah. Maybe I'll send you some deco art paint to try. We'll do something cool. Okay. Got those, oh, one more. We got the red. This red is the prettiest red. It's called True Red by Americana Deco Art Paint. Thank you for sharing, Lynn. Yes, Alyssa, if you comment live alert in the video, you will be notified next time I go live. And I'm doing a 10 day Facebook Live challenge right now. It ends September 1st. So um, if you do that, you'll be notified every day when I go live and I'll probably always be doing something painting related each day. So um, yesterday I painted a fall door hanger. Let me show you real quick in case you missed that video. Look at this. I haven't like finished dressing it up yet. I'm probably gonna put a name on it and a bow and all of that. But look at this cute little technique that we did yesterday. So cute. And then the day before that, Whoops. The day before that, I painted a big boo, letters boo, door hanger. Okay, so next. The next step is you want to take all of these colors and put them in one cup. And I'm just going to kind of pour them in different sections of the cup. So I'm just going to pour the brown down this way. And there's not a ton of this brown, so it's not going to take much. Then I'm going to rotate my cup. And I think what, I, I mean, it's kind of like you're going to get a different result every time you do this. Nothing is ever going to turn out the same. So just play around and experiment with it because that's what I'm doing today. And man, this makes the paint thin. So I'm just continually rotating my cup and pouring each color in. And this is way more paint than I probably need for this tiny little leaf. But I think it's going to be neat. Okay, so can you see all my colors are in there all crazily mixed together? I'm going to give it a little shake. Just because. All right, now comes the scary part. Let me angle my camera down because I want to. I want you guys to be able to see this when I do the pour. Okay, hopefully we've got it pointed down okay. All right, um, this is a lid. I told you guys I'm so unprepared. Put it on something that your paint can't flow into the floor. So this is a really old like lid to a plastic container. And what I've seen in videos, I have not watched a tutorial for this, so I don't know if I'm doing this right. You can either lay it right here and do it, but then the paint's gonna get stuck all over the bottom side, right? So sitting it on an elevated surface helps the paint drip off. Okay, so let's do this like this. We've got our cup of paint. I'm gonna lay it like this. <laughs> I'm nervous, you guys. You, there's a lot of you guys watching. What if I screw this up? Okay, flip it over. Ah, I gotta hold the pressure. And I'm gonna try to set it on the cup below, balanced. Okay, somebody count down for me. Okay, Bluegrass Floral Fine says I'm doing this right. I really hope so. <laughs> One, two, three. Oh, I like the teal and the red together. Okay, so let's just kind of, I'm gonna blow on it. See right there where it's kind of marbling just a little bit? That's what the cells were that I was talking about. I don't think you have to blow. You can actually like tilt it and make it flow to the edges. This is really cool. I think this is probably gonna take days to dry. <laughs> Yikes, I need some going this way. I feel like it needs more red. Maybe I can get some more red out of out of my cup. I think the red's all underneath. And it really doesn't have much orange showing through yet either. 
Maybe I can drip some more orange on it. Like I said, we're totally experimenting here. I don't know what I'm doing. I think there's multiple ways you can do paint pour. There we go, now the orange, ooh, that looks really cool. So I think I've seen people use straws before, but I didn't bring a straw in here, so we're just gonna. <laughs> I need some more going that away. <laughs> Y'all are probably laughing at me. Ah. Like I said, I don't know what I'm doing here. I need some more paint on, let's do some yellow because I don't have much yellow in there and I've got a lot of yellow paint left. I need some more paint on this end. What if we do this? Ooh, yes, that's smart. I like that. Okay, let me see if I can get that to shift. To cover that end, I had a tip where it wasn't covered. Ooh, it's not covered up there either. And then shift it back down this way. <laughs> you guys, this is like, it's fun, but it's also a little nerve-wracking at the same time because I'm so afraid I'm going to screw it up. But then again, I think this is one of those things where you just keep playing with it till you like it. I'm trying to get that corner covered. Okay, it's all covered. Hallelujah! That is awesome! Okay, yay! It turned out even better than I thought it would. Okay, now I talked about that I wanted some gold in there, right? So, um, I didn't bring enough cups. Let me try one of these just regular big old cups. And I'm going to do some, like, gold metallic paint. Not a lot. I should have gotten another one of these little cups because this is probably not going to work. And I'm probably thinning it out too much. I can't read y'all's comments. I'm sorry. Somebody said another technique you can try is to cut slits in the side of the cup and lightly squeeze and rotate. I saw that. I thought about doing that, but I wasn't sure why some people do that instead of just lifting the cup straight up. I may try that next time because now I'm kind of addicted and I want to do this again. This would be really fun for a paint party. Okay. I mixed up some gold and we're just going to kind of drizzle and see what, what this, and I may do it kind of on top of this yellow. Ooh, that's pretty. This is going to take forever to dry. And it's dripping all over the place. But, okay. That is awesome, guys. Can you guys even see that for all the background colors and stuff? It's got a lot going. The, the cup is actually stuck to it on the bottom side. And I'm going to have to wash my... Yeah, somebody said I was brave to do this in my brand new shirt. Well, I do have... Um, a tutorial over on Instagram for how to get paint out of your shirt using rubbing alcohol. So if y'all go find me on Instagram, you can see that tutorial. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Okay, if you want to be notified when I go live tomorrow, type in live alert so that you get a notification tomorrow. And, um, oh, somebody said they want to see what I mixed. It's called Deco Art Pouring Medium. Pouring Medium. And I believe they have this at Hobby Lobby and Michaels. I'm not sure. Somebody said blow dry all the extra and blow the extra off. Okay, I will do that. I do have a blow dryer here. Let's see what happens when I hit it with the blow dryer. Somebody said it's supposed to make the heat cells come through. Is that true? I wonder if I need to put it on low. There we go. There's really not as many cells as I thought there would be. I was wondering if I started to heat and dry it, what would happen. It kind of looks like the top layer is just drying, though, instead of doing much. Now, that is blowing it around. Kind of a cool effect. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to let it air dry for a day or two. <laughs> and then whenever I get my acorn painted, I'll show you guys what it looks like with the acorn. Somebody said, use a straw and blow through to move the paint. Okay, thank you, Patricia. I kind of like the way it looks, though, right now. I don't want to mess with it too much. And uh, 
you know, maybe not like it. So I probably used a little too much yellow paint. That's the only thing I might, might have done differently if I could do this again. But I probably will be doing this again because this was really addicting. All right, thank you guys for jumping on here and watching with me today. And as always, share the video because I'll probably give something away. I'm going to find something to give away. All right, I'll see you guys again later. Bye.